sure you all hear what I'm saying today. Let's read Matthew 11 from verse 2. Now, when John the Baptist in prison heard about the activities of Jesus Christ, he sent word by his disciples and asked him, are you the expected one, the Messiah? Or should we look for someone else who will be the promised one? Jesus answered, go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and lame walk. The lepers are cleansed by healing and the deaf hear. Can you see that? And the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Look what Jesus said. And be blessed is he who does not take offense at me. Okay? As these men were going away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Those who wear soft clothing are in the palaces of kings. But what did you really go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, one, one and far more than a prophet. Oh, this is the one of whom it is written by the prophet Malachi. Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Can you see that? And uh, let's stop there. Let's stop there. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was reading this. I was asking myself some questions. And which also I want to answer them for you. And I believe that uh, there was something that Jesus was teaching. You know, the Bible talks about uh, John, when he was baptizing people, all people were going to him. But when Jesus came, people started to go to Jesus for baptizing. And the Bible says it was not Jesus that was baptizing. It was the disciples that were baptizing. To extend that, when people went to John and say, the one you baptized is baptizing many people that side. And John was able to speak and say, he must increase and I must decrease. Because no one can be given anything unless it's coming from above. John knew what he was saying. But if you read there, you will see that it's only when now John was in prison. You know, when you're in prison, you don't have you don't have access of many things or to many things. And the Bible says uh, he called his disciples and sent them to Jesus and said, Jesus, is he, is he the one that I was expecting I'm in prison? In other words, John was beginning to question if Jesus is Jesus. Who can allow him to be in prison. And then now, you know, Jesus said, He said, Okay, go and tell him what you saw. The blood are receiving sight. The lepers are being healed. The, the dead are raised. And then this is something that Jesus was doing. Which John knew that Jesus, Jesus will do this. He knew that he was opening the ministry of someone who would do all this. Jesus could not answer John and say, 
am the one. He said, you, he's not supposed to be offended because he's in prison. He must remember the will of God for him. Just write the will of God. The will of God. You, the will of God in the life of John was, was that he would have to be arrested. He have to be killed that way. But him, he didn't know. He did everything and then until to a point where he was beginning to ask questions. Ah, I've been doing the will of God. Now I'm in prison and so this one is one not saying anything. If what I was doing was the will of God, let's find if he is the one that I was opening door for. Here Jesus was trying to show that I am the one. Because John, what you have been promised is happening. I'm the one because now the dead are raised. The, the lepers are cleansed. So don't be offended because you are in prison. What you have done was the will of God. You know, I was learning that so after you have done the will of God, your expectation must not be noted by you. One, one of our mistakes is after we have done the will of God, we want to see the results. Here, yeah, John also was affected. I've been doing the will of God. Maybe I might have introduced the person who's wrong. And Jesus said, no, I'm the one. You see, but I'm not supposed to remove you out from prison. The second thing, when I was learning about the, 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 the will of God, if you have finished done the will of God, it's only God who take over. That's what after you have finished done the will of God, it's only God who takes over. Here you could see that John was supposed to be saying, no, come and take me out. I was also learning that after you are done everything you are supposed to be done you are, you, are, you are not supposed to live again. You are not supposed to live again. After you have done everything that God wanted you to do, you are not supposed to live again. Do you know why you are still alive? It's for the sake of the will of God. For you. There is still some elements. There are still some things you need to do. There are still some assignments that God has assigned for you. For. But after you finish all, what do you want to wait for? You need to go to heaven. But John also was concerned because he was in prison. Sometimes it's nice to do the will of God after that you find yourself in prison. It's than to be paid off. Because if you are doing what you need to be paid off, it might be the will of man. The will of man brings wages. But the will of God brings the will of God. I don't know if you're hearing me. That's why the will of God brings the will of God. But the will of man brings wages. Even if you can't get anything after you have done what you have done, rejoice that you have done the will of God. Look at this first Peter 4. Peter chapter 4. When Peter was speaking from verse 1 to 6. From verse 1 to 6. Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh and died for us, arm yourselves like warriors. 
with the same purpose, being willing to suffer for doing what is right and pleasing God. Because whoever has suffered in the flesh, being like-minded with Christ, is done with inter intentional sin, having stopped pleasing the world. For that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living for human appetites and desires, but lives for the will and purpose of God. For the time already past is more than enough for doing what the unsaved Gentiles like to do, living unrest, unrestrained as you have done in a course of shameless sen sensuality, lust, drunkenness, carousing, drinking parties, and wanton idolatries. Okay, here you can see that the will of God is self. Sometimes it can lead you to suffering. And the Bible shows that even when you suffer, it's better than just to, see, to sin. And the Bible even shows that even when you suffer, it's better than just to sin. It's better when you are struggling doing the will of God. And you are suffering doing it. Than all the blessing of this world. When you are still in the flesh, you were doing all sin. But here you have been brought in a place where the will of God is needed on you. So more with the sweet long yet tattoo yamo di muinya ke hang mo we. There are challenges. One a little challenge. There are problems that you need to face, but as long as you are doing the will of God. One a little matata oto kopenali on as long as we are not doing tattoo yapa. But don't expect yourself to receive a blessing after doing the will of God. Oro tamu ala chufa chokamara wa tattoo yamo di. Because if you are doing it, you are assigned to do it. Kau bana how di la tattoo yamo di muinya vi wa wujire. It's for you to show that you have been you, 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 you have been assigned as a as a steward. You, you, you have been sent to do something. I don't know if you hear me. And if now you are a good steward, it's only God Himself who will bless you. I don't know if you are hearing that. Say I'm a sign as a steward to do the will of God. Many of us, our problem is we were in a gospel of we do, we get this. We do this, we get that. And that gospel has affected us. Because if we look at the Christians of old, they were ready even to die for this gospel. They were ready to die for the will of God. I don't know if you're hearing that. If God says, this is your will, do one, two, three. Don't have any excuses of not doing that. If God wakes you up to pray, pray. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. it. Let it be a will of God. If we read Luke 22, 41 to 46, you will see that the will of God that Jesus prayed for was not easy for him. He was suffering for him. The Bible says Jesus prayed until he was like he's about to die. He talks about he was at the point of death. It's only when he pray a prayer of saying. Father, not my will, your will. I want your will to be done. He receives strength. And pray intently. Listen to this. If you pray for the will of God, if you pray because of the will of God, or you want to do something because it's the will of God, God will give you strength to do it fully. I don't know if you're hearing me. The reasons why we fail, one 
Whatever we are praying for is for our win. Is there to praise us. But if you are doing something which is of the will of God, you will receive strength. Jesus received strength to pray them all. I was reading the Bible says more intently. He was at the point of death. But, uh, but the voice changed. The strength came. You know, Jesus was different with anybody who died. Even when he's about to die, he, was, he, he shouted with a loud voice. Different with a dying man. Because he, he was doing the will of God. He he do it with strength. I pray that today, what God wants you to do, do it with strength in the name of Jesus. I pray for the strength in that business. business. I pray for the strength in that marriage. I pray for the strength in, the, in that hearing. Sometimes you find that you want to do something but it's impossible. To do. And when you look at it, you find that it's difficult for you to do it. But you are hearing God say, do it. Let it be the will of God. And if it's the will of God, I see it as an assignment for you. God will give you strength to carry it out. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tassel say, what are you facing? What are you facing? Whatever you face also, it is the will of God. You know what the Bible says? It says whatever you face, any circumstances you face, it is the will of God for you. Okay, let me show you John 4 verse 4. You see Jesus receiving strength from verse 4 to 6. You see when he was sitting very close to the world. When the disciples gone to buy food. When Jesus was so tired and the disciples were sure he was hungry. And Jesus when he see the woman coming, after he ministered to the woman, when she went to the city, the disciple forced him to eat food. But he denied that food. Because he was happy about doing God's will. To win the people who cannot be won by anyone. He wanted to reach out where no one has ever reached where there are boundaries he wanted to reach there and the Bible says he denied food because the will, the will of God destroyed the appetite of the world and bring forth God's appetite sometimes you find that there's no food you need there's no temptation that can tempt you there's no challenge that will attack you there's no failure that will shame you because you know very well in you God is doing something something. There's an appetite in you. There's a desire in fullness in you. I don't know if you are hearing me. That's what I say, my friend. God's will bring appetite from God and makes you to deny the world's appetite. You can't make friendship with the world because automatically you have got enemy to with God. You will trust God as he is and you don't do it when it's tough. Many people are in heaven. They will tell you that the world was not shit. This world is not our home. They never had any 
any appetite the try to translate what they are hearing to other people because they can see where they are going I don't know if you are hearing me we need Christians who can wake up and say I have seen what I have seen I am not a Christian to die here I am a Christian to have appetite from God to do the will of the Father and to enjoy it ask what are you doing for God ask what are you doing for God can you just answer what are you doing for God we need Christians who can do something for God you stop talking you begin to do something I don't know if you are hearing me we need Christians who can act according to the word of God and enjoy it and they find that they've got no excuses of anything I was surprised to find that we've got a generation that will give you a reason of their excuses of their sin I mean I was telling mama say, we've got now a generation that will tell you that you know I'm still young I'm supposed to do what to so, do I mean if you want to do the will of God the will of God consumed you and open your eyes to yeah, see beyond what, what, what flesh is seen. You enjoy what other people you cannot even understand why you are doing it. Coming to church is like you are going home. Worshipping God is like you are seeing God. You have got appetite of the things of God. Shake somebody and say, my friend, are you doing God's will? Or you are here to satisfy people. You are not here for me. For example, you know, I'm not a pastor that will say, you are here for me. Oh, or maybe you are, you are supposed to support me so that I, I go to heaven. Or I, say, I mean, you must do the will of God when you are here. You are, you are not here for me, you are here for God. Can you tell you are here for God? You must do the will of God. And you must be serious with it. be serious with it. I was telling someone, I said, it's true that God talk about long life. But I just said that, I mean, why Jesus died when he was 33? So sometimes you find that we are living long because we have not started to do what God wants. Now, what you do you do what God wants? Now, what do you do what God wants? Sometimes you find that you're just finishing bread. You're wasting time. And God doesn't want to take you because you don't have a home. Because in heaven it's only people who do the will of God. If you reach to heaven, they won't tell you about charis. They will tell you about the mind of God. And to do the will of God. What is it that you were doing? And why do you want to go to heaven when you are doing nothing? So that's the reason why you will live long. Because what is the use of you dying now you go to hell because you have not done anything? If you can die now, you have not done anything for God. It's possible you won't go to heaven. Because in heaven, all people who are there have done something. Others have rejected the offers from Satan and trust the living God as he is. Others they have preached the gospel where the word of God cannot go. Without looking at money in other things. What they wanted to do is to do what God wanted to do. I don't know if you are hearing me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So therefore, these issues of doing the word of God can bring revelation to us. Read this verse. Just read this verse. You will see. Uh, 1 John verse 17. It says the world is passing away. 
But he who does the will of God abides forever. Listen to this. If you do the will of God, you are sustained to reach there. That's what the Bible says. That's why Bible it says abides forever. It means there are forces to remove you. There are forces to remove you. Where you are. So now you are immovable. Stick fast. No one can remove you from where you are. You are biased forever. I don't know if you are hearing that. Even if you die, people are still knowing you are there. You still speak even when you are there. I don't know if you are hearing me. I see some people here that the Lord want to sustain them. Listen, because of the situation you are in, the Lord will sustain you. You will abide forever. You will be there. Whatever that comes to remove you will be shaken out of you. And you will carry on with what God and has created you for. There are some Christians who are listening to me where they are standing is impossible. But I'm hearing God say there is no body that will shake you out of that place. As long as you are there you will be sustained by God. That's why I say I will be sustained. And I'm sustained. I cannot be moved by anyone. It's the will of God for you. The will of God brings you to be there. Planted by God. Not removed by anyone. I don't know what you are facing. Maybe you are facing all challenges of the world. Just carry on doing when the will of God. Carry on doing. Even when there's this unfavorable conditions. Tell yourself that you will be sustained by the living God. There are some situations that the devil shows that you are going nowhere. But I'm here to tell you what nobody has ever told you. You will not be anywhere in this present time. But if you carry on doing what God wants you to do, God can still take you there where you are not expected by your enemies. You don't need anyone to take you forward. You need the living God. Say you need the living God. I say you need the living God. Tell us you need the living God. I see you being sustained in your work. Sustained in the business. Sustained in the job. Sustained in the family. Sustained in that ministry. And I tell you this. When you do the will of God, sometimes, sometimes, things are not allowing you. Sometimes things are not allowing at you. Because there is nothing that you can speak or say or bring a proof that God is with you. But I'm here to tell you that listen to this. Though it's like that, there must not be anything that remove you from where God has planted you. I don't know if you are hearing me. There must not be anything tell yourself that as long as I'm not seeing me, I'm doing what God has called me to do. I will stand my ground and carry on doing what I'm supposed to do. I don't know if you're hearing me. But I'm here to tell you that you must be sustained by the living God. Let me tell you this. There are some people here that are living in the past. But I repeat to my mother's vision. I say I saw a very big head. And then I was driving a car, but I saw a big hand. In that big hand, I saw this hand taking me to heaven. Yes, but there is no big hand that is taking me to heaven. When he was taking me to heaven, when I passed the class, I could I hear this cloud. I could hear this cloud. I could hear this cloud. When I passed it, I could hear this cloud. When I was going up, I could hear this cloud. I see this hand stopping. When it started to stop, I began to ask why this hand now is stopping. I heard no. It's because of your children. Your children. 
So now it's better we go back. So I'm taking you back because of your children. And I began to see the hand coming down. I told Mama this thing. I said, Mama, it means I've got a very big job with my children. Because already I feel that there's nothing that I need. For me to live is Christ. For me to die is double. Paul said that because he saw the importance of going home. And he didn't see the importance of himself living on it. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can I tell you this? If now your assignment of doing God's will has not yet come to an end. God will never allow you to die. I don't know if you are hearing me. I know I'm here because of you. I know I'm here because of you. Can I tell you this? The devil has tried all to make sure that I must not be here. But it's only God who brought me here to do God's will. When I'm doing God's will, you are receiving His will. When I'm doing His will, I transfer His will of you. When you receive His will, you become what God wants you to be. This year, people will know God is alive because of your life. I don't know if you are hearing me. Take somebody and say, hey, I want you to do God's will. That is the only formula of taking you forward. That's why you see me pray for people like this. That's why when I'm in the church here, I don't look at anybody. That is why I look at any celebrity. I'm not here for blessings. I get the lady to fudge on because I never start ministry with blessings. I know the God's will pays off. And we can't finish the blessings from God. You need to tell yourself that every day I must do what God wants me to do. Sometimes you must wake up in the morning and ask God, what is it that I'm supposed to do today? Because I don't want to get out from your will. I want to be in your will. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I want to declare to some people who are here today. When you start to do God's will, I see success coming to you. I see victory will be your portion. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When you are in God's will, sometimes it's tough for people to recognize you. Like what happened to Elijah. But there will be a time like, like this week. I said like this week. That time is coming for you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I said there's a time that has been a sign. You are destined for that time. This is the time. Say it's my time. Of a breakthrough, I will do God's will. And I'm not looking back. And as I'm doing, this week, this week, is your week. Say is my week. Let me now carry on shouting because I want to give you some scriptures. I love scriptures a lot. If you read this verse, how come I love it? Yeah, First Peter three, chapter three. If you read from sixteen to seventeen, how about verse sixteen? I don't want to talk more than this. I don't want to talk. Just read that verse. You say what? How about verse sixteen to seventeen? Yes. And see to it that your conscience is entirely clear. So that every time you are slandered or falsely accused, those who attack or disparage your good behavior yes. in Christ will be shamed by their own words. For it is better that you suffer unjustly for doing what is right, and, then, and that should be God's will, than to suffer justly for doing wrong. This means that doing God's will can make you not to be accepted. You are 
you find no one understand you. Because you are doing God's will. You reach a level where you find that you are not accommodated. And when you reach that level, you suffer. That's what the Bible says, you suffer. But there will be a time of visitation. Can you just read verse 17? Louder? In your Bible, read it louder. You say what? It's better you suffer. That's what the Bible says. But you suffer unjustly. But you suffer unjustly. But you suffer unjustly for doing what is right. Can you hear that? It's better you suffer when you are doing what is right. And then now, remember, when you suffer, people will leave you. But you carry on doing. And carry on doing. But there will be a time whereby the same people who left will come back to you. Because that's what God wants to do for you. People, when you suffer, you suffer unjustly. That's what the Bible says. You say you suffer unjustly. All Christians who are destined to go to heaven, they suffer unjustly. But this suffering, it won't be there forever. I don't, I don't know if you're hearing me. It's for a moment. Maybe that's why Paul said, Maybe that's why Paul said there's nothing that can separate me with the love of God. Why? Because the suffering will be there to separate you with what God wants to do in your life. And you hold on. And you carry on. I don't know if you're hearing that. Can you tell me, what are you facing? Are you suffering unjustly? Is what God wants you to do to face and it is the will of God for And that will of God as they have left you there will be a day of visiting where God will visit you what they are not expecting from you God will change everything I don't know if you are hearing me I see God changing everything about your life sometimes you must reach there remember, remember the world is not our home even Jesus a chair I have overcome the way. It it there are trouble in this world. You will suffer unjustly. Do you know that you can suffer because you love someone? You can, you can just suffer because you have loved a person. Let me give another example of suffering. I'm to say that I've encountered on people. I told Mama that in Charis, we must not rate people by their education. Because here we have got doctors, professors. But we must not rate them that way. But you know, I was understanding why other pastors normally do. Some pastors around them, they are. Professors. I mean, doctors and doctor people who are holding higher positions. So I told Mama, I said, you are educated. And God has called us to a low so place. So we must never try to prove that we are this and that. And we must never take anybody for any consideration. Let's allow everybody to be equal because we are here for those who are more educated. You know what we suffered of? We began to take, take people who are useless and make them something. When they become something, they hit our heads. Because remember, I believe that's the way Many pastors take people who are already there. They don't want problems. I said, Mama, this is what God wants us to do. The gospel is there to lift people who are useless. But 
We have to suffer because of the After you lift those people up, definitely use them against you. Useless people. People who have failed in life. You take them so close. You are trying to promote them. These are the people tomorrow that devil will use. Because devil use such kind of people. And I began to say, if I didn't know what God said concerning his will. I was supposed to say, professors, doctors, come close here. You, I... Because at the end of the day, you will be in a mess. But that mess is what the scripture is saying. You will suffer unjustly. Because you have suffered, you have taken them, you lift them, they hit you. You suffer unjustly. And when you suffer unjustly, you are doing the will of God. You are doing what? The will of God. The will of God want all your efforts to trust where other people cannot trust. To lift the people cannot be lifted. And without looking what they will do tomorrow to bless people that cannot be blessed. Without looking if they will bless you tomorrow. Because you are blessed after you have done the will of God. I prophesy someone who is listening to you. That God is giving you a new assignment. As he's blessing you. You will be the hand of the living God. I say you will be the hand of the living God. You will lift many. I say you will lift many. I see the hand of God upon you. I see the hand of the Lord. The, the hand of God. Say I will do his will. Say I will do his will. In the name of Jesus. This is how church is like. You come here wrongly wired. And we do the will of God. When the wire goes up. You backfire on us. And we suffer unjustly. But that suffering. I see shit victory. That is coming to you. Are you ready for that?